Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to smoke pork ribs without wrapping them, and we're gonna get started by setting up our smoker. All right, so we're gonna be using our Oklahoma Joe's Bronco drum smoker today. So we'll open our lid, take our cooking grate off, we'll remove our heat deflector, and then you can fill your charcoal basket up with either briquettes or lump charcoal. Then we'll bury a couple of fire lighters in there and get them going. All right, so we've got about 10 minutes before those briquettes are gonna be ready. And like I said, you can use lump charcoal if you wanted to as well. It doesn't matter too much in drum smokers. They are such an efficient unit and they're really responsive to any vent adjustments. Typically lump charcoal does burn hotter, but it really doesn't matter in a drum smoker. So while we've got 10 minutes, we're gonna trim and prepare our pork ribs. All right, so we've got a nice rack of baby back pork ribs. When I'm looking for a rack of pork ribs, I want some nice straight bones just like so. And you want a nice even meat coverage on top too. And with baby backs, you've got the loin meat here. It can be quite lean, so I always like to look for a lot of intramuscular fat in there. Otherwise it can be prone to drying out. But what we're gonna get started on is just trimming any excess fat off the top. I do wanna leave a little bit of fat on top because we're not wrapping these ones. Leaving a little bit of fat on top is just gonna help them stay nice and juicy. All right, so I'm happy with how they're looking. So I'm gonna flip them over. It's a real thin end bone there. I'm just gonna square it up on that end. And on this end, that's really thin compared to the rest of it. So that's just gonna potentially overcook. So what I'll do is just square it up on that end as well. All right, and now we're gonna take that bottom membrane off. So you want a butter knife for this part. If you use a sharp knife, it's just gonna cut through the membrane. And from about the second or third bone in, you just wanna get your butter knife, go up against a bone, slide it up, wiggle it around at the same time, and you'll feel that membrane break. Keep giving it a wiggle around, and then you can get your finger under there. You're gonna break that membrane off. Then to make life easier, get some paper towel. It's gonna to help you grip the membrane. Then you should be able to peel it off all in one piece, just like so. And now these are ready to season. All right, so now we're gonna season our pork ribs. If you've got a favorite pork rub, go ahead and use that. We're gonna be using our new Honey Soy Slammer rub. Or if you wanted to keep it simple and enjoy some nice savory pork ribs, honestly, salt, pepper, garlic pork ribs, always work a treat. So we're just gonna give our pork ribs a nice light coat in some yellow mustard, just to help our rub stick to the meat. And then we're gonna season them up generously in our honey soy slammer rub. All right, now our pork ribs are all trimmed and seasoned. Let's check on our briquettes. All right, so our fire lighters have burnt out. Our briquettes have caught a light. There's a nice amount of heat coming out of there. So what we'll do now is we'll shut our lid and we'll open up both of our vents completely. Now I usually run my ribs up around the 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius mark, but because we're not wrapping these ones, I'm gonna run it a little bit lower, more towards the 250 Fahrenheit or 120 Celsius mark. So we're just gonna let this drum come up to temperature now. So once we get up to around that 225 Fahrenheit or 110-ish Celsius mark, we'll set the rest of the barbecue up, we'll get our ribs on, and then we'll look to stabilize our temperature off. And while our barbecue's preheating, we can get some smoking wood ready. I've gone with a combination of pecan and apple wood from Natural Smoke, but honestly, most fruit woods will go perfectly with pork ribs, and two or three chunks for a rack of pork ribs is fine as well. So we'll come back now once we're ready to get these ribs on. All right, so we're ready to get these ribs on. So we'll open our lid and we'll get our chunk of apple wood on right where the fire's burning. And then we'll put our piece of pecan just off. Then we'll put our heat deflector in, then our cooking grate. That apple wood smells fantastic already. And then we'll get our pork ribs on. Now we can shut our lid. Then we'll let our barbecue come up to just about the temperature we want it to be at and then we'll start closing down this intake vent to stabilize our temperature off. All right, so we're up around that 225 Fahrenheit or 110 Celsius range. So I'm just gonna shut our vent down by about half. Then I'll give it five to 10 minutes to see where it stabilizes off at. If I've overshot my temperature, I'll close it down a bit more. Then I'll give it another five to 10 minutes to see where it sits at. Or if we've come just under our target temperature, I'll open it up slightly 
and we'll just fine tune it from there. When I'm running this drum, the top vent will always stay wide open and I'll just make any adjustments using this intake vent. So once you've got your temperature stable, which shouldn't take long in a drum smoker, there's not really too much more we need to do for the first hour and a half to two hours of this cook. Because we're not wrapping these ribs, we're gonna be spritzing them quite often once they start looking a little bit dry. And because we're not wrapping them, this cook's gonna probably take another hour or two longer than it normally would if you were to wrap your ribs. So for me, pork ribs normally take about four hours when I'm wrapping them, but I'm expecting this cook to take more towards that five to six hours. So we're just gonna let these pork ribs smoke away now. We're gonna make sure that temperature's nice and stable and we'll check back in once we're about an hour and a half to two hours into this cook. I think we might be ready to give these ribs a spritz. We've gone with some Pirate Life Acai and Passion Fruit Sour, but if you've got anything fruity like pineapple juice, apple juice, or even apple cider vinegar, that all works great. And one thing you wanna make sure of, whatever you're using, bring it up to room temperature. You don't wanna be spritzing hot ribs with an ice cold liquid, as it's gonna really slow down the cooking process. So these have got a few dry spots, so we'll just give them a nice spritz. All right, and we'll close our lid and we'll check back in every 45 minutes or so from now on to give them a spritz. All right, so we're about three and a half hours in now. I didn't show the last spritz because the pork ribs honestly didn't look that much different. But as you can see now, we're starting to get that really nice, deep, rich mahogany color and we're getting some really nice drawback on them bones too. So before I give them another spritz, we're just gonna check our internal temperature. So we're sitting at about 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 85-ish degrees Celsius. So I reckon we're on track for about that five hour cook. So I'll give them another spritz and we'll let them keep going. All right, so we're pushing close to that five hour mark. These are looking sensational. I reckon they should be just about done as well. So we'll have another probe around. There's not much resistance there at all. Looking at about the 196-ish to 200 Fahrenheit mark or about 93-ish degrees Celsius. Still a tiny bit of resistance there, so we'll give them another spritz, and I reckon these will be done in about half an hour. All right, it's been another 30 minutes. I reckon these will be done. 205-ish Fahrenheit or 96 Celsius internal. They are probing very nice all over, so we can get these out. All right, so I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna take these inside let them rest for about 20 minutes, and then we'll come back to slice and serve them. All right, so these pork ribs are ready to slice and serve. Now, if you wanted to give them a glaze with your favorite barbecue sauce or rib glaze, then by all means, go ahead and do that. I just wanted to try that rub on its own with the pork ribs. And the other thing we've done, we've just shut down both of our vents on our drum smoker, and that way any leftover charcoal or briquettes we can use for our next cook. So let's waste no more time and get stuck into these pork ribs. As you can see, nice and juicy. Let's have a taste. Mm. As you can see, beautiful, clean bite away from the bone. They are super tasty. And a nice clean bone at the end is what I like to see. Definitely a great way to do your pork ribs if you're looking for something different. So give it a try, keep an eye out down in the description and I'll put a link down in there when Honey Soy Slam is available. But for now, that's the end of the video. So if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below and we'll see you next time.